welcome to our study today. I want to start off by telling you, you know, that you need to fear. Yes, we all need to fear. We need to be afraid. We need to be very afraid. You should be very afraid during this day and time. You know, scripture teaches in Luke 21, chapter 21, verses 25 through 27, it says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distressed of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. You know, when we think about that, it says there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And we think about past, the recent past events of the um, recent years. We see in year 24 through 2015, we had the blood moon tetra. You know, on 4-15-14 during Passover, there was a blood moon on Sukkot. There was a blood moon on Passover the next year. There was a blood moon. And on Sukkot the next year, there was a blood moon. You know, this is a sign with the moons. And even as um, the pastor said, sign with the sun, with the moon, and with the stars. You know, there was a sign in, in uh, August 20 of tw August 21st of, of 2017, there was an eclipse. You know, a complete eclipse, what they call the Great American Eclipse. You know, and on the 23rd of September, 2017, you know, there was a sign in the stars. So we have been seeing, we have seen a sign in the sun, a sign in, in the moons, and signs in the stars. You know, and so, you know, what is y'all trying to tell us? What is he trying to tell us? You know, we see the blood moon, the moon, uh, which some believe, many believe is the ruler of the night. You know, is it gonna shed blood? Is that why the, 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 um, the blood moons? Is the ruler of darkness, the prince of this world, is he gonna shed blood upon the earth? The eclipse. The great American eclipse is the light of Yahuwah about to go turn into darkness. Is the light about to be shaded with darkness? Or is darkness about to try to put the light out? You know, the sign in the stars, you know, we spoke to Revelation 12, you know, woman travailing to give birth but it also spoke of a dragon waiting to devour the child are these signs of the times has the end time come upon us matthew yahoo 24 7 and 8 says for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places or in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, this is concerning the last days and the end of the age. It speaks of pestilences. Coronavirus is a pestilence, is it not? It speaks of earthquakes in various places. You know, when you look at the data concerning earthquakes, you'll see that they've been progressing as the years have been going by. You know, in the 1700s, I think there was only like eight or nine. In the 1800s, it was something like 13. In the 1900s, there was something like 30, about 30 to 33, you know, major ones, you know, and these are the ones that, that uh, actually created tsunamis, you know, um, that were really bad. 
And since 2000, since the year 2000 and the 2000s, you know, we're only be um, it's at 2020. And it's already been, it's already been um, something crazy like 18. You know, so, and that, I think the, um, the graph I was looking at only went to 2010. So from 20, 2000 to 2010, it was only like 18. And the one in 2004 was the worst ever recorded in history with over 230,000 deaths. But scripture tells us, you know, that this could just be the beginning of sorrows. You know, I don't know if we're truly in this time or not, but I'm, it's my job as, as a watchman to watch, you know, and to sound the alarm. You know, we do see signs in the heavens. We see signs of, with the sun, with the moon, and with the stars. We do see a surgeons, you know, in earthquakes. And we do, now we see a pestilence upon, upon the planet, a pandemic. It's, and the way things have been going, it looks like it won't be too long before we have famine. You know, but scripture says that if this is that time, that this is just the beginning of sorrows, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, this is not the time that we really have to worry about. It's what comes after it. Well, why? Let's see what scripture says in Matthew 24, 9 through 14. Again, concerning, concerning the end times, it says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Hmm. So what could possibly cause many to become offended and to betray one another and to hate one another? What could bring about that? Could something like this bring about that? I wanna propose a scenario you know, consider the COVID-19 vaccine that's currently in the making, so they say. Could this be something that could bring about that type of situation? Would people hate you if you didn't take it? Would people try to kill you because you didn't take it. But concerning vaccines of any sort, did you know the word pharmacy comes from the Greek word pharmakia, which translates to witchcraft or sorceries? Did you know pharmakia can also mean poisoning? Not only the word pharmacy comes from pharmacia, but also phar pharmacist and pharmaceutical. And pharmaceuticals. You know, our pharmaceuticals are poison. Your body recognizes any foreign substance as poison. And seeing that they're all chemically based, the body recognizes them as, as poisons. You know, so the more things change, the more things remain the same. Titus 2, 11 and 12 says, For the grace of Elohim that bring of salvation have appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. 
So the grace of Elohim, you know, because a lot of people like to talk, you know, that they're under grace, that we're under grace, and we are under grace, but the grace that we are under that brings us salvation teaches us that we are to deny ungodliness and, un and worldly lust. And that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. What are the works of the flesh? What are some of these worldly lusts that we're to abstain from? Well, let's take a look at Galatians 5, 19 through 21, which teaches us the works of the flesh that undoubtedly are worldly lust. It says the acts of the flesh or the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. And I want you to know that this word witchcraft, this word witchcraft right here is number five, three, three, one, pharmakia. Those who use pharmakia will not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Also, let us consider Revelations 18, 21 through 24. It speaks to Babylon's fall. It says, then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, thus with violence, the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found anymore. The sound of harpers, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore, nor craftsmen of any crafts shall be found in you anymore and the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you anymore the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore the voice of the bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore for your merchants were the great men of the earth for by your sorcery all nations were deceived and in her was found the blood of the prophets and saints and of all who were slain on the earth now take note that it says, for by your sorcery, this word sorcery, again, is pharmakia number 5331 in your Strong's Concordance. It's pharmakia. It speaks to medicine. It speaks to drugs. So I pray that you can see that they're going to use sorcery to deceive the nations. For by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived. Why would you want to take something that scripture tells you will deceive you? And it says, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and saints. See, because the true prophets and saints won't adhere to witchcraft or sorcery. They won't adhere the farmer kid. Revelations 9, 20 through 21, it says, the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues, speaking of the end time, did not repent of the works of their hands, nor give up the worshiping, uh, give up worshiping demons and idol, idols of gold and silver and bronze and stone and wood, which cannot see or hear or walk nor did they repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. Again, they did not repent of their sorceries, their pharmacia, their drugs, their medicines. I pray that you can see this. They did not repent of their sorceries. So again, I say, did you know the word pharmacy comes from the Greek word pharmakia, which translates to witchcraft or sorceries? These sorceries in scripture are spoken of as the very things in which will be utilized to deceive the nations and, and all the world, even the very elect, if it was possible. But it isn't. Because we know that pharmacia 
is the way in which the nations will be deceived. Now I want you to think about this vaccine that's coming. I want you to think about it in conjunction with what we read in Matthew Yahoo 24, 9 through 14, where it says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. I want you to think that if the true saints of Elohim refuse to adhere to a, take the vaccine, I want you to think, will they deliver you up to be afflicted? Will they go so far as to kill you? Well, the people of the nations, will they hate, will they hate us for? You know, because I'm gonna tell them my king My king will not allow me to adhere to that. My king tells me that I can't succumb to pharmacia, that I am not to ingest pharmacia. I'm not to put pharmacia in my system. My king forbid me. My king, Yahushua. Do you think that others will get offended from this? If you were to tell them something similar, do you think that even some of your own loved ones will betray one another, that loved ones will betray one another, that even saints will betray one another because of this? Do you think it'll cause folks to hate one another? I don't think it's too far-fetched to say yes to any of that. People are already tripping. People are already tripping because you're too close to them. You need to stay six feet, six feet back. People tripping because, you know, you don't have a mask on. People tripping because you don't have gloves on. People are fighting over these simple things. When there's been absolutely no proof of anything. Yes, something definitely going on, but we don't know what it is. We haven't been given any proof as to what it is. We just have to believe what they tell us and what they tell us don't make sense. What they tell us don't add up. Say lie. So you see, this is why I say, be afraid, be very afraid. You should be very afraid. You should be filled with fear. The fear of Yahuwah. Follow me as I follow Yahushua. I'm a Hebrew. I fear Yahuwah, the Elohim of heaven. This is Yona 1 9. That's the only one I fear, is Yahuwah, the Elohim of heaven. Scripture teaches us the fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in Yahuwah is kept safe. I want you to listen to that, saints. I want you to let that sink in. The fear of man will prove to be a snare. That's how they trap you. That's how they trap the nations. They're, they're, they'll use fear. They use fear to snare you. A snare is a trap. But whoever trusts in Yahuwah is kept safe. So when you act, if one asks me, you know, what I think of the coronavirus, what I think of COVID-19, what do I think of what's going on out here? What do I think of, this, of these things and what's transpiring? You know, do I think it's true? Do I think it's not true? 
you know, my truth is scripture. That's what I put my faith in. The word of Yahuwah Elohim and his son Yahushua HaMashiach. That's where my faith lies. That's what I trust in. Sanctify us with thy word, Yah. Thy word is truth. So fear not. Yes, Yahu 35, fourth, say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your Elohim will come with vengeance, even Elohim with a recompense. He will come and save you. You know, if you fear Yahuwah Elohim and his son Yahushua HaMashiach, then you need not to fear any further than that. Only to be strong. And know that Yah is going to come to our aid. Yes, Yahu 43.1. But now thus say, just thus says Yahuwah, he who created you, O Yaakov, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name. You are mine. Don't you know, saints, we belong to Yah. We belong to Yah. We are his. There's nothing that man can do us but uh, but kill our flesh. But Yah is able to raise it back up. Yes, Yahoo 41, 13 through 14. For I, Yahuwah, thy Elohim, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thy worm, Yaakov, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, say of Yahuwah, and thy Redeemer, the Kodesh One of Israel. Hallelujah. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle that the priests shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not. And do not tremble, neither be terrified because of them. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. That's Deuteronomy 20, verses 2 through 4. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For Yahuwah, thy Elohim, he it is that doeth go, go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. If Yah is with us, who can be against us? Let's do it around me. 31 6. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance of Yahuwah. See the deliverance Yahuwah will give you. Yahuda and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and Yahuwah will be with you. Hallelujah. That's 2 Chronicles 20, 17. Elohim shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old. Say lie. Because they have no changes, therefore they fear not Elohim. Psalms 55, 19. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. After Yahoo 10, 28. So you see, saints, we're not to fear those that can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, because even if they kill the body, our king can raise us up again. Yahuwah Elohim can resurrect us. So we need to fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body. Fear Elohim alone. You don't have to fear COVID-19. You don't have to fear coronavirus. You don't have to fear man. You don't have to fear beast. Fear Yahuwah alone. Fear Elohim. Elohim, Yahuwah, and His Son, Yahushua HaMashiach, are the only entities we need to fear. 
Luke 12, 32, do not fear, little flock, but it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not, for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What do we have to fear? Nothing but fear itself. Because if Yah is with us, who can be against us? Luke 12, 7 teaches us that even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are not, ye are of more value than many sparrows. If Yah take care of the sparrows, how much more will he take care of us? We just have to know and understand, trust and believe that he is El, that he is sovereign, that he is the creator of the heavens and the earth, that he has us in the palm of his hand, that our safety lies in his shadow. We have to fear him and begin to walk in his will, way and purposes. And to stray and abort all wickedness stray from and abort all wickedness and wicked ways all the lust of the flesh and works of the flesh all the worldly lust that we're accustomed to doing we, it's time to repent for the kingdom of elohim is at hand it's time for us to begin to seek yahweh with all our hearts and with all our minds and with all our souls There have been signs in the heavens as to whether or not the end is upon us remains to be seen. But one thing's certain, one thing's for certain that you can take to the bank, that there has never, ever been a people to live on this planet who are closer to the end time prophecies coming true than, than we today. And tomorrow will be even closer. And it sure looked like some things are lining up. It sure looks like scripture is coming to pass even before our very eyes. Will you repent? Will you seek the kingdom of Elohim and Yah's righteousness? You know, it's unfortunate that there's a lot of disinformation out here concerning Yahuwah Elohim and his son Yahushua, concerning salvation, concerning what he expects of you. You know, it's by design. The enemy is real. He has scattered the field with his tares. But there are, there are wheat out here. There, is, there are wheat to be found. You have to search and seek Yah with your whole heart. Only then will you find him. So you have to ha stop half-heartedly searching because you'll never find him that way. And if we are near in the end, which I know was much closer than the people who lived um, before us, much closer than our predecessors, then we need to really take this thing seriously. Especially seeing that we actually have signs that equate with scripture that are coming to pass and aligning right in our very lives, in our very time. You know, it's an awesome time to be alive. It's an awesome time to be a saint. For if this is the beginning of the end time prophecies, then maybe we have an opportunity to have our names written in the book. Maybe the way that we deal with what may be to come, maybe it'll get our stories written in the book. Maybe the next wave of saints will be reading about us in scripture. What a awesome opportunity. For the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So I'm going to leave you with this quote. 
Yeah, it's not a religious quote, but it's pertinent all the same. It's by Ralph Waldo Emerson. It says the wise man in the, in the storm prays to Elohim not for safety. Um, it says the wise man in the storm prays to Elohim not for safety from danger, but for deliverance from fear. Fear not, my children. For Yah's wilfulness. Fear not, my mothers, for Yah's wilfulness. Fear not, my brothers and sisters, for Yah's wilfulness. And if Yah's wilfulness, who can be against us? That's all I have for you today. Prayer was a blessing. May Yahuwah bless thee and keep thee. May he lift up his countenance upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May Yahuwah lift, may Yahuwah lift up his face upon thee and give thee peace. May he put his name upon you all. May he bless you. Hallelujah.